So, uh, okay. okay. So, if you allow, uh, please uh, allow me to share the the PowerPoint. I have I have made a PowerPoint uh, presentation. Yeah, I think you can do it. Okay, perfect. All right. Okay. So, uh, right. Can you see the uh, the yes, my my PowerPoint? Yes. Thank you. All right. So, I, I my name is uh, John Bietzung. I'm dean of the international law faculty of the Ho Chi Minh City University of Law. And this is the one of the two biggest uh, law university in Vietnam, and uh, we have uh, around uh, every year we recruit about one thousand five hundred law students, and uh, I think and, and about uh, one fourth of them is uh, ma majoring on international law, and uh, and uh, my actually my uh, my expertise is vested in, in on on uh, international trade and international investment law. And uh, today, I would like to uh, uh, present uh, or let, uh, get, uh, of, uh, for you the um, uh, uh, lecture uh, with the, uh, uh, with the um, um, content relating to the Vietnam experience in developing the international investment agreement networks and the uh, management of investor state dispute settlement in Vietnam. Uh, well, this uh, my lecture will comprise of uh, five parts. The first part, I would uh, I will introduce the background of the international uh, uh, policy uh, of Vietnam, so that you can understand how uh, we develop our uh, investment treaty uh, policy, and then we will uh, and that and that uh, that will uh, be the uh, the start for the. Uh, the second part where we are, I will introduce the uh, how how Vietnam uh, de designed and uh, and um, uh, focus emphasize on in, in investment treaty. The third part I will uh, focus on the internalization of in, in investment treaties in Vietnam. Uh, this is very important part because the implementing yeah how, how to implement how to um, uh, how to apply the international obligations uh, in, uh, in in the interest of development is very important and that is actually one of the very important challenge for many countries in the world uh, uh, as uh, that would lead if, if the, the in inefficient uh, implementation would lead to uh, the investor state disputes which uh, is very uh, expensive and uh, and uh, very uh, uh, costly uh, and very uh, um, uh, high, very um, you know pressured on the government policy. So uh, uh, so uh, this is uh, the, the very important issue that in Vietnam now the government pay attention, uh, given the rise of the, uh, the disputes in the recent years. And um, yeah, I will highlight some of the, of the weakness in the mechanism for internalization of in, in investment treaties in Vietnam in my fourth part. And then the last part I will um, reserve for the, uh, you know, um, explanation of the, some of the development in management of the uh, investor state uh, dispute in, uh, uh, in Vietnam. Yeah, so this, uh, and uh, I, I will go, uh, I, will, I think I will reserve about 30 minutes for the, Q and A. We can so can we can discuss and uh, I can uh, maybe uh, clarify some of my points. Yeah. So uh, just to uh, give you an, an, a background of the uh, development of the uh, Vietnam uh, economy uh, and uh, investment policy. Uh, I think uh, uh, if you look at Vietnam, Vietnam now is still a, a socialist country, and uh, but uh, we have changed the. Uh, I mean, it, pre, uh, we have ch changed to move, move forward the market economy since the last uh, three decades, and it uh, and uh, before the and it, it, the milestone for this change was the implement recognitions and implementation of the Doi Mới, so-called Doi Mới policy, which is uh, translated into English as uh, renovation policy uh, in the mid of uh, 1980s, and. Um, 
in uh, you know before before that uh, vietnam uh, really followed the the ideology and the concept of uh, the economic uh, development of the soviet union and they, uh, the government totally ignore the uh, i mean emphasize the absolute sovereignty of the states over the economic and natural resource and also deny the the role of uh, uh, for investment uh, to make to to form decades they consider the the uh, for investment as the some kind of threats of the capitalism in the for the country so uh, they didn't have uh, you know the any policy that encouraging the uh, for investments and you, as you know before the 19 i mean between the 1945 until the 1975 there was a civil war so not many uh, invest i mean economic activities really happened in vietnam in even in the south vietnam and after the reunification in 1975, the government have uh, actually promulgated a law, the so-called rules on foreign investment, but the law is very weak. And they really mm, that, that didn't uh, uh, provide uh, you know, protections for the foreign investors. And all the investment must be in uh, joint venture with the government agency. So. Actually, this, this, this law didn't attract much of the investors from overseas. So it's a kind of failure. Uh, according to uh, just for information, during this uh, period, I think there was only two projects uh, was registered from the, the under this under these rules. However, uh, things changed uh, significantly after the 1978, uh, I'm sorry, 1987 when the, the government have uh, implement the uh, Doi Moi policy. Under this, actually, under this policy, the Vietnam uh, recognized that it need to change towards the market economy uh, and uh, it, uh, um, it uh, and uh, avoid the cent central, centrally planned economy. And um, another important point that the Vietnam have recognized is this Vietnam needs to integrate into the world and uh, make friends with all other countries. And um, it was the, actually the milestone for the, the economic uh, development in Vietnam. Uh, the, the, the policy of Vietnam in the end, at, at the end of 19, uh, 1980s, early 1990s was just to normalize the economic uh, corporations with other countries in the world. And uh, we, uh, it, uh, Actually, it should be noted here that uh, during that during the 1980s, and uh, Vietnam was under the embargo of the U.S. Uh, government uh, due to the war in the Cambodia. So uh, no, no, almost it didn't have any economic uh, uh, relationships or cooperation with the Western countries, uh, and um, uh, the, the I mean they have limited uh, some limited. Uh, cooperation with the uh, Eastern Bloc, yeah, uh, with the socialist camp of, uh, under the, the Soviet Union. But once uh, it's um, uh, the collapse of Soviet Union, they, they lost uh, the, you know, the, the partners and, uh, you know, they, and the Vietnamese government have to try to rebuild the, uh, the, the credibility and um, uh, then, and um, cooperation with uh, other countries especially with the Western countries. And uh, so during the 1990s, the number one missions of the government was to uh, break the ice, to normalize the relationship with the, uh, with the, uh, you know, with the US, with the Western country, with the country in the regions. And, um, uh, it, and this it can be made by signing different kind of treaties and um, entering, uh, you know, uh, regional and uh, the, and uh, international economic um, on, uh, on organization and thanks but you know the, the actually thanks to the change of the world when the the, you know, the, the collapse of the cold i mean the, the end of the cold world and country start to uh, open to, to towards cooperation and uh, this effort of vietnam has uh, received with uh, enthusiasm from the other countries and, and, and actually this, I want to emphasize that uh, uh, this is actually uh, also important point for Vietnam because uh, Vietnam start to signing the investment treaties. 
and to attract the foreign invest the investments. One of the very important conditions for 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 country to invest into Vietnam is to to receive the international uh, you know to 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 to, to get the commitment from Vietnam to, on protection of the of, uh, of the investors. So uh, you know the in, uh, the invest uh, the investment treaties was the one of the first treaties that Vietnam signed with the uh, you know the, the the other countries. And the first country who was well, well, that signed with Vietnam was uh, uh, Italy. Yeah, the, in 1990s, it was the first be uh, bilateral investment treaties, and it was also among the first treaties, the economic treaty that Vietnam signed with any uh, with Western countries. Uh, following the uh, following that, Vietnam had to sign many many uh, uh, investment tre bilateral uh, treaties (BIT), and uh, it, it it was a kind of you know. Um, uh, considered as a kind of instrument for Vietnam to uh, to uh, have recognitions by the other countries, and um, uh, during 1990s, it, it's it, you know it, it signed uh, a lot of um, uh, you know about 50 BIT only during the 1990s, and so uh, uh, and I, I will uh, and actually this this uh, when we we actually never, even didn't go and didn't. Uh, much negotiate much about the terms and condition of those treaties, and uh, and uh, actually uh, this is actually on uh, cause uh, some problem now, uh, uh, on nowadays for the Vietnam, and uh, because uh, the the as you know the investment treaties uh, was uh, were meant to protect the foreign investors if and if the investment in and if the investment protection is very broad then the government will very be very be will very difficult to uh, protect their policy if they want to change the policy and affect the the foreign investors uh, but uh, uh, well uh, uh, you know for but it is the development and vietnam has accepted and it, it, but as is as it, as it, as it, as the the bit as uh, the uh, the um, instruments for integrations and uh, it also adopted law on foreign investment, and uh, especially it has uh, adopted a new constitution in 1992 to uh, recognize the private sectors as one of the uh, component in the in the in the national economy. Recognize the foreign investment as the one of a very important source for boosting the economic social progress in the country. And uh, with that, it start to. Uh, uh, Develop the legal and framework for uh, FDI uh, in Vietnam. And uh, today, actually, Vietnam is among the top country in Asia with the, who, who have signed the, the international investment treaties. Uh, we have around 84 uh, investment treaties, uh, including the 61 uh, bilateral investment treaty. And uh, some other treaties which have which have the uh, investment protection provisions, and um, uh, we also provide uh, international commitment towards the FDI protections in, at the free trade agreements. Yeah, most recently we have signed the the free trade agreement with the European Union, and which uh, and uh, I mean uh, eventually it has actually changed to the. The, the Viet, uh, Vietnam EU Vietnam uh, Investment Partnership Pact, but uh, yeah, this can consider one one of the most recent uh, investment treaty that Vietnam signed in the 2018. So uh, I here we can see a, a map of the uh, of the countries and regions in the world which Vietnam have signed the uh, investment treaties, and I think. You can see that we cover almost all the countries in the world, uh, uh, most most of, most of uh, Euro Asia continent, Australia, North uh, North uh, North uh, America, uh, some uh, Argentina, Chile, uh, and uh, uh, some uh, and also is uh, have signed the, the investment treaty with Vietnam. In Africa, we have signed a treaty with uh, Egypt. Uh, Morocco, uh, Mozambique, uh, and uh, some uh, some other countries. Yeah, so uh, as you see, the it, uh, we have um, tr investment treaties with uh, quite a substantial country in the world. Uh, and uh, in in Asia, we are now top three.
country uh, among the top countries that have the have signed the, the they have have the very this kind of comprehensive uh, investment treaties after China and Korea. Yeah, so uh, uh, here I would just uh, highlight some of the important uh, treaties uh, of Vietnam with important partners. Yeah, the United States. With United States, we have the uh, bilateral uh, bilateral trade agreement with the U.S. We also have the the agreement investment agreement between the ASEAN and the USA. Um, as Vietnam is a part of the ASEAN, then this this agreement also cover the the Viet uh, Vietnam jurisdictions, and um, we have the we have the. Uh, free trade agreement with the EU, which uh, have the uh, uh, investment charters on, uh, uh, and that could uh, actually in the future uh, it, it will replace the the, the bilateral treaties with 27 uh, BIT that of the uh, other European uh, members, uh, European Union members, and um, with the we have the. Agreement with Singapore, one of the very very important uh, partner in the regions, and, uh, and the, the this uh, the, the, they are actually the, if for invest, investors from New Zealand to Vietnam or Vietnam Vietnamese investor to to Singapore will be protected under the BIT between Vietnam and Singapore. The and or protected can be also re receive the protection under the ASEAN Comprehensive Investment Agreement or under the uh, comprehensive partnership uh, trans Pacific pact the so-called cptpp and uh yeah with japan the same we have bilateral agreement with the with the japan uh, investment tre uh, treaty with japan the fta between asean and japan and the cptpp with korea we have uh, yeah, the bit uh, the fta between asean and korea and the fta between vietnam and korea so uh, investors from Vietnam to Korea will be protected under those uh, treaties, as well as the uh, investors from Korea and to Vietnam will be protected under under uh, the, these treaties. So, uh, uh, well, now we I will move to the um, a bit more, more substantial to the the, the 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 goal of the Vietnamese uh, in uh, policy towards the investment treaties. Uh, as I, I mentioned earlier, Vietnam with uh, government is uh, very uh, uh, firm with their commitment on protection of the foreign investors and, and foreign investments. They consider uh, foreign investment under constitution as one of the important uh, source for the developments. So uh, it has the develop the law and continuously improve the law to, uh, to protect, to provide uh, better, prote uh, better conditions better assessment for the investment. And uh, in addition to this, it also signed many treaties. So uh, here I would like just want to uh, uh, also divide it. Um, I mean, the, 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 um, the, miles, the two milestones for the, for, the, for the content of the treaties. The treaty signed in during 1990s, as I mentioned before, is just you know, signed to uh, sign it to, um, uh, you know, to show that you know, Vietnam is a part of the world. So we did, we uh, actually didn't um, um, negotiate much. We just, we take a role of the rule takers. So all the term and condition proposed by the counterparty will be accepted by the government. And uh, that actually uh, um, caused uh, problems when, um, when it um, come to the dispute with the investors. Yeah, so the, because investor will be protected very in, at, very, at very high level. Uh, so, but during uh, soon uh, after we have joined the WTO, or and uh, we start to and have more experience and expertise on international law, the Vietnam's government, uh, or uh, I mean, Vietnam economy has become more mature, and the more and more Vietnamese uh, uh, investors also go overseas to invest, then. Uh, uh, that would also uh, put a pressure of, for Vietnam to uh, develop further the investment treaties with other countries, the targeting countries. Yeah. So um, uh, and uh, with those countries, Vietnam also negotiate and also take the same role as the 
as the the the, ex, uh, the capital exporting country. Yeah, we have signed the, the investment treaty with Mozambique, uh, Venezuela, Kazakhstan, uh, and some other countries. And we're very uh, uh, you know uh, dynamic in the developing the terms because uh, for those country uh, the government is considered as the target uh, market and it uh, need to, uh, to also pro, uh, you know negotiate to provide the of sufficient protections for Vietnam investors. Uh, but for on the other hand. We also uh, 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 see the problems that uh, arise uh, due to the former uh, BIT. So uh, Vietnam tried to uh, change the situations by uh, negotiating new agreements, yeah? new agreement to uh, uh, which uh, contain the um, to contain the provisions that uh, provide exception for protecting of the protecting the change of policy uh, that uh, serving the public interest. Or you know, in name of the sustainable development, yeah, they, they, they will they have some provisions on that uh, can balance the interests of the public and then uh, the interests of the investors. And uh, the, with those, I mean, we can I can name some very important recently signed uh, investment treaties like um, the the European Vietnam uh, investment uh, uh, investment pact. Or the CPTPP, we have the provision that uh, you know uh, that allowed the, the government to consider the you know uh, the interest, public interest, and uh, to protect the environment, to protect the uh, the human uh, human rights. Yeah. So this is uh, something new that uh, we have put into our the treaties that we have recently negotiated and signed. Uh, we also actually for the CPTPP, we also have some uh, uh, side agreements with some of the members to uh, 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 to restrict the the implementations of the investor state dispute settlement mechanism. Yeah, without and uh, with Australia, and in particular with Australia, New Zealand, we signed those uh, uh, side agreement that you know the both can both the end so that the dispute arising between the investors of those countries in Vietnam or Vietnamese uh, investor in those countries will not be, cannot be brought directly to the international arbitration. Yeah, so it needs to be uh, received the approval from or consent from the uh, government. So that is a very important progress. Uh, yeah. In the nutshell, I would say that Vietnam now uh, seeing the development of the investment treaties as the true for strengthening the the nation the domain the national investment policy as well as the, uh, the as well as the uh, in investment policy overseas, yeah it um, it uh, consider uh, and it continue to keep this uh, the the substantial network because uh, it consider it, the, this network as a, a important element for the development in the in the future. All right. So now uh, I would like to move to another and the next uh, issue. Uh, next uh, parts of my presentation is about the internalization of investment treaties. Uh, well, uh, this uh, this is actually a very important part because, uh, as you know, the the under international law, the state uh, treated as a unified. Uh, Entity such uh, and um, such as the act of or omission of all the state organs or regarded as act of uh, omission of the states for purpose of international responsibility, and uh, so when Vietnam have committed to with uh, uh, with certain obligation, it must com uh, comply and and implement the the policy uh, in a co in accordance with their commitments and. Um, and uh, the and uh, this is actually a, 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 a is a challenge for a country developing country like Vietnam when we still mm -hmm. under the the legal system the the um, the legal system is, is, is still under development under developed so uh, and uh, the the state organs they are not well uh, prepared at uh, at the lower level. At, at the uh, local level, so it, it, they may 
uh, you know, took certain actions that um, not complying with the international obligation of Vietnam, and it, it, it will cause the, the, you know, the, the disputes with the states. And um, uh, um, in uh, here, I, um, for, I, I use the word internalizations uh, because uh, it's, it, it's just not uh, about implement the, the rules. But uh, it also it means to um, to refer to the uh, the formal and informal process that uh, and the measures by, by which the states and uh, it, uh, to uh, uh, states uh, consider their obligations from the uh, from from the making national and regulatory policies and regulation or the other decisions. Uh, in comply with the international uh, obligations in or in uh, in in uh, overall, so uh, uh, it's uh, I think it's a bit uh, it's a bit broader than just implement the rules yeah, in, uh, in, uh, in in this sense, and um, uh, the, and the, the government not just about the, the introducing the law introducing the rules, but you also need to. Uh, uh, you know, ex, uh, refrain from certain actions. Uh, make sure that the, the, their agencies, their, their subordinates, will not conduct certain actions, omit from uh, uh, that, um, that uh, or make the people understand aware of the international obligation of the states, so that to avoid the uh, investment state uh, disputes. So it, the internalization is a bit uh, broader than just uh, to uh, the. the the, the uh, terms of uh, implementations. So, uh, uh, so uh, and yeah, I mean, when when we do what, and so when we are talking about the internalizations, uh, there are, there will be uh, uh, five elements that we need to pay attention. The first is the formulations of the of the investment treaties. Yeah, how to how we formulate how to uh, develop the investment treaty. The second is the um, the second element is the uh, the national uh, national internalization strategy. In this, the government have to uh, make the informal internalization, preventive internalization, and remedial internalizations. Yeah, so uh, it must have a comp comprehensive uh, strategy, and it will be conducted by the public admi administrations. And uh, by, uh, by by the, the agencies of the government at an SO level, the national uh, administrations, and back again to the international relations. So the, the actually the the Vietnamese entities go overseas. They also need to understand the the rights and the and the, the, the protection that they may have under the international treaties of Vietnam. Yeah. So um, uh, that is the the whole system that it need to work to make the uh, the internalization works uh, efficiently. So uh, now I will move to uh, uh, analyze uh, on, on this uh, one by one. So uh, in order to, uh, uh, to uh, formulate the investment treaties and adoption of investment treaties, we uh, actually have uh, established uh, a law, a, a very specific law on the uh, promulgations on, on the law of treaties, how the, the old procedures how to uh, uh, negotiate? How to how to which which which, which, uh, which procedure have uh, need to undergo to uh, make sure that the 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 treaties are in compliance with other treaties with and not violate the constitutions. The which and it, it it details the procedure that the government will accept the the you know the proposal for negotiation with the uh, international treaties. Uh, and uh, this actually uh, uh, actually is uh, provide a very comprehensive uh, and detailed guidelines for the government to uh, prepare for the, uh, the international treaties. Yeah, so the most less, and the law has uh, the most recent versions of the law was uh, and, and of this law was adopted in uh, the year of 2016, and uh, uh, it provide a, a quite um, I think the comprehensive framework for the government. And uh, so here, I just want to uh, provide some uh, uh, a chart on the how how the the, the 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 treaties, the investment treaties, are um, uh, formulated in Vietnam. 
uh, you, as you can see the the the, the authorities that uh, have the assigned with the right to propose uh, the negotiation with the uh, on the investment treaty is the government yeah the government is um, the government or the president of vietnam but um, uh, president is um, uh, uh, the president will be involved in the more comprehensive agreements yeah where they, it very comprehensive and uh, involving uh, the change of many laws including investment law and the president will propose the the, the this um, uh, investment treaty the treaty if if just if the if the treaty is um, have the content similar to other treaties and no need no, no not require the change of law then the, the the government will take initiative and the government will assign this to the ministry of planning and investment yeah so the ministry of planning and investment will propose whether we need to sign the the treaty investment treaty with the with the, some other country and uh, at this at this at that uh, stage the the other two ministries will also involve is the first is the Ministry of Foreign Affairs that uh, they will you know they they will check to review whether the signing would have uh, you know conflict with any international obligations or it will or it have any uh, issue of uh, uh, signing for Vietnam and the other ministry would involve in this is the Minister of Justice yeah he they will the Minister of Justice will review and uh, uh, and have com com uh, comments whether you know on, on the proposal by the ministry of uh, planning investment and once it is approved by the government this uh, they, uh, they 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 uh, they they can uh, propose to the national national assembly for the start the negotiation and signing yeah so but most of the uh, most of the the the, uh, the investment treaties now can be uh, you know adapted very fast you know, if they don't have any specific uh, special provisions that uh, that is um, uh, that might lead to the uh, to the problem of implementation in Vietnam or need to change the law, yeah, it will be approved very fast. And uh, also the the, uh, the Ministry of Planning Investment they have uh, developed some kind of um, uh, sample uh, investment treaty. It's not disclosed to public. But uh, they have um, uh, some kind of uh, guidelines for the, the, so they can review very, very fast and can, you know, can can uh, uh, confirm with the nation, the parliament, the national assembly. And so this is the, the generally the, the the process of formulation of the investment treaty. One, the, the treaty is signed, and they they need they will be ratified by the uh, government or the national assembly. If the if the, the if they, there is no need for change or any other law, then the government will ratify. It. If they need to lead to the change of some other laws in Vietnam, then they will need to be uh, ratified by the National Assembly. Yeah, so, for example, the, the most recent uh, treaties, yeah, the 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 EU Vietnam Free Trade Agreement. Yeah, because it leads to change many laws, then they need to be uh, approved and ratified by the National Assembly. And uh, at the moment, the uh, the treaty already uh, has has been ratified and in in uh, and, uh, and enforceable uh, because it was approved by the the European uh, European uh, Union uh, Parliament. So. Uh, now, uh, to change the law, I, actually we need to also, I, I, just, I will just keep, make very brief introduction of the legal uh, system of Vietnam. We, we can see many, many law, many uh, different kind, type of uh, regulations and uh, uh, legislative documents. But basically we divide the, 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 the legal documents into two types. The first is the legal document uh, adopted by the National Assembly. And the second is the guidelines document adopted by the government and its agency, executive uh, branch. So all the laws in Vietnam actually proposed by the government, the executive, uh, executive uh, branch, and the National Assembly will, uh, will discuss and they approve. So in Vietnam, when, when they introduce the law, this is the, the law documents will be approved, only be, can be adopted by the the national assembly the parliament whereby the the legal the documents that explain the implementation will be vested into the hand of uh, the government 
So that we have degree, circular, and uh, resolutions. Yeah, all those documents is considered the, we call sub-law documents. The documents that explain the, the implementation of the law. They are also the legal documents, but is issued, adopted, yeah, by the uh, the government or the, by the by sometimes by the court. Yeah, so uh, this is the 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 the, 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 the introduction of, of the legal system of, of Vietnam in nutshell. So uh, uh, to monitor to monitor the 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 mechanism for the lawmaking process, we also adopted a law. On promulgation of the of the legal documents, and uh, uh, here I, I just want to uh, highlight the, how the how the uh, the law is adopted in in Vietnam. We can you can see that they in Vietnam the the government is the, the authority that proposed the law. It will propose to the national assembly uh, and national assembly in the in this uh, working program every year. It will you know, approve the, the the program for for legislation program, and it will, it will it will return this to the ministries. Yeah, actually in Vietnam the the ministries uh, will be the uh, uh, the the one who drop the law. Yeah, who will be the agency who drop the law, and then they after the drafting they will uh, you know they 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 will propose to them. National as National Assembly to uh, discuss and approve, you know, or disapprove and request the quite the, the amendments, further amendment. But you know, this is the procedure, and um, uh, uh, but because uh, and the problems, the, one of the main problems in Vietnam, where um, in for many years is the sometime the, the when the, the the law is drafted or proposed by the uh, ministries, yeah, they uh, they may not uh, uh, or they ignore or unintentionally uh, forgot about the interest of some uh, other uh, uh, you know interests of some parties. So um, uh, uh, because of this, uh, the Vietnamese government in the recent uh, law and promulgation of the legal uh, document have required that the all the drafts law must be put for public uh, opinion. So they, every draft of the law must be uh, uh, you know, subject to the public uh, comments and uh, public opinion. Yeah? And, um, so it, it, uh, and so the all, all, only after that they, they, they will be they can be they will be um, uh, 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 adopted yeah? at the uh, at the na at national assembly level. Yeah, so uh, the Vietnamese government, and uh, because of the international integrations, we have committed to to uh, ensure the transparency. So the, the the legislation process now become more transparent, and uh, and the, but for the adoption of the law, the adoption of the law is actually quite transparent. But for the adoption of the guidelines for implementation, of the law is now is still. Uh, Kind of uh, hub uh, open, yeah, hub liberalized. It's still uh, and uh, it, that's why some sometimes the implementation will be very long. After the law adopted, the, after the government adopted the law, uh, the government may take very long time to introduce the the guideline document. And without the guideline documents, the implementation is face uh, a lot of uh, challenge. Yeah. So, but it actually uh, uh, in in the, in the area of investment. In for in for investment, actually, it doesn't happen. It happened in other area where sensitive for for Vietnam, for example, in the area of uh, labor uh, labor law, or in in the area of uh, you know the relating to uh, um, uh, some you know maybe uh, some uh, uh, sensitive area uh, like uh, in the area of uh, land uh, the land law yeah land land law. It, they, they, there is a very long delay for guideline implement uh, guideline documents, but in other area, especially in, in, in the in the area of investment, the, there is no such issues. So, uh, uh, yeah, I mean here I just hi hi give uh, hi highlight some of the, the development of the the law on promulgation of legal documents, and uh, so you can see the 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 the, the, the development with every. Uh, 
every every uh, regularly we uh, amend the law so it to ensure that the 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 the, law, the promulgation of legal document is uh, more effective more efficient uh, from year to year okay so uh, regarding the 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 investment uh, the the monitoring of the investment, uh, investment <laughs> Uh, implementation of the investment treaties. Actually, there are three very key. There are three key ministry involved. First is the um, Ministry of Planning and Investment. This is the uh, ministry that uh, propose uh, all the uh, treaties, as as well as propose the as as well as the, the key ministry that uh, drafting the law on foreign investment. Ministry of Justice is also. Uh, involved in the commenting the draft by the Ministry of Planning and Investment, Ministry of, Ministry of sorry, I should there should be not Ministry of Justice but Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Yeah, I I I think it's a typo mistake. So Ministry of Justice, Ministry of Justice and Ministry of uh, Foreign Affairs will uh, will uh, will be the involved in the commenting on the draft law by the Ministry of Foreign uh, Planning and Investment, and some other ministry that, that they also make comment. Uh, relating to their jurisdiction so uh, uh that the government will then uh, ex uh well, well will then uh, uh, pro um, make decisions whether to uh, adopt the law or adopt the rule adopt the measures for the fti for investment so this is the, the how in general the, the system works on the uh, Adapting the policy, open investment policy, as well as the law and regulation on the uh, on the on investment for investment. Uh, so, uh, uh, the, um, so now I, I would move. I would like to move to some of the uh, issues that uh, Vietnam is facing at the moment, relating to the internalizations of uh, the. Investment treaties, as we mentioned, the adoption of the law, adoption of the policy is more or less, uh, uh, you know, developed in Vietnam over the years. However, we uh, we face a big problems uh, when the law and the rules is uh, to be adopted, to be implemented in at the local level. The reason what the reason is that the 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 the, the local government they don't they have no. Uh, expertise and awareness of the international uh, obligation of Vietnam. They only implement the law, and sometimes the law does not say the does not reflect all the 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 the, the, the commitments of Vietnam in international law. So that's uh, that's why they uh, some when they implement the measures, some they often uh, you know make mistakes. And uh, when mistake cannot be corrected, or can when it is a cause of disputes, then they you know they become uh, issues for uh, for bigger issues for Vietnamese government. And um, uh, so uh, to 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 handle this issue, the Vietnam uh, government have uh, assigned the uh, Minister of Justice, Minister of uh, Planning and Investment, uh, and uh, to uh, you know regularly. Uh, organize the training for the local governments, lo local uh, local officer. Yeah, but then the problem is that the they, they budget, the financial, the, the finance for this is limited, so they cannot do do it. Uh, you know, too many times a year. Maybe once a year they do the training, and it's not sufficient enough. So. Uh, usually in Vietnam is that the the the, the province or the the location, the locality that facing more disputes, they will have more experience. Yeah, so <laughs> to that sense, the 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 the, 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 the Ho Chi Minh City, the biggest economic uh, center of Vietnam, is the most experienced, uh, uh, you know, uh, government relating to uh, investor state disputes because they have about 55, 52, more than fifty percent of the investment disputes in uh, in Vietnam is uh, come, you know. From Ho Chi Minh City, and uh, the, the 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 Department of Justice in Ho Chi Minh City is very, have many expertise in this regards. Uh, but you know, it, uh, there's some other province they also um, you know face uh, the same issues in the 
in the if they don't implement the law uh, or implement the, the obligation of the state correctly they they will also cause the problems and uh, and it can can, can cause a, a very big uh, amounts of um, of damage liabilities for the states so yeah i mean the only way to do is to improve the is to help the local government understand about the law and uh, yeah the government have been trying and uh, to uh, make it and in some international organization also help Vietnamese government to 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 do the training yeah so uh, it 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 expected you know, that they they that they uh, with times they they will they they will change the the, the situations the second problems, second big challenge for Vietnam is that the court in Vietnam, they don't also don't care about the international law. The judge is very conservative. They only recognize the Vietnamese law and they very rarely refer to international treaties when they make decisions. Yeah, so um, uh, they, uh, and uh, when, when I did the research at the, uh, uh, um, with um, research with um, the court the judges, and they they say they you know when they make decision, they very rarely, you know, uh, refer to uh, the international treaties of Vietnam, especially investment treaties. So uh, it and as I mentioned earlier, all the, the 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 branch of the states can be will will be assumed as the actions by the state. So if the court make decisions. Yeah, at which um, lead to violation or breach of the obligation of the states, then actually the, 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 the investor can sue the government, the states to the international arbitrations. Yeah, so uh, we have, in the past, we have a very big case where the, the court, you know, they just, uh, the, the, uh, the court just followed the Vietnamese law. Uh, of course, it happened very, quite a long time ago, you know, about uh, in 2004. Yeah, they, they, at that time they, they called they just ignore the, the international treaty that Vietnam signed with the Netherlands and they prosecute um, uh, uh, Vietnamese uh, the in, for investors. Actually, he's a Vietnamese overseas. He's a Netherlands. Uh, he's a Dutch national, but he's a Vietnam. Uh, he's uh, has a uh, he's uh, he's a uh, Vietnamese by uh, by blood. So that and then the person he he has uh, actually at that time Vietnam didn't allow the foreigners to buy land. But the, the person, I mean, the, that investor, he just uh, bought the land through his uh, relatives, which in, was in breach of the uh, criminal law of Vietnam at that time. Yeah, so um, the court uh, have, uh, you know, prosecute him and, uh, and uh, give him a sentence, confiscate all the, the, the property. Yeah, and <laughs> so, uh, and then through the diplomatic, uh, 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 channel. He was released, and uh, but when he come back to Netherlands, he, he initiated a law, uh, an arbitration case against Vietnamese government. So uh, yeah, and then it uh, Vietnamese government have uh, you know uh, lost in that case, and it was actually one of the first case that uh, I, I asked the SK in Vietnam, and it was and it and the problem was the very clearly about the understanding of the court on the. Vietnam obligation in under international treaty. So, uh, uh, but uh, uh, now uh, I uh, this and this this I think also need to be changed gradually. Yeah, when they court the judge understand more about the international law, it will be very helpful for Vietnam to internalize the uh, internalize the international obligations. Now about the management of investor state is the dispute investment dispute in Vietnam. The last part of my presentations. Uh, Actually, uh, uh, the as the, um, the development, the the size of economy of Vietnam increase tremendously uh, 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 during the last decade, uh, uh, and it will lead also it had, it had led to the increasing dispute in, in Vietnam. If you look at the statistic before the 2010, we only have two disputes, only two uh, investor state disputes. And uh, but from the 2010 until the 2022, we have the government have received 14 case of uh, complaint or uh, notice of uh, initiations of uh, ISDS case. Yeah, and among them, uh, six were uh, actually brought to the international uh, tribunal. So uh, 
at the moment in, in overall we have around eight cases and uh, uh, this is not very big but uh, come if we look at the the the, the, the time when they uh, happen then we see this uh, this trend is actually very uh, uh, very uh, uh, present and it, it, it's a big problem because all the dispute with an ISDSK is uh, always uh, multi-millions. Yeah, I must, uh, the, 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 the one of the case that we are, or, or big case that they're having now is about, about billion US dollars. So it is a big for Vietnam, a developing country. And um, so uh, the, the government now pay very special attention to, towards the managing of investor state invest, uh, disputes. Uh, and um, and uh, it's, uh, uh, it uh, have uh, here. I, I, I highlight some of uh, the eight cases that we have we we face uh, in uh, until now. Yeah, so uh, you can see that the, uh, the the many cases happened in during the year of 2014. Yeah, four cases, and uh, some of them is have uh, is still pending. Yeah, uh, and. Uh, and the, all the cases are related to the the, 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 the investors from the uh, big partners of Vietnam, yeah, including the UK, Korea, USA, France, yeah, all those those are important uh, uh, count, uh, important uh, trading investment partners of Vietnam. So that is that means that uh, we have to pay special attentions and how to manage this uh, the, the, the 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 situations. So. In, uh, in under the law of Vietnam, the uh, we we have in the investment law, we have uh, uh, pro provided several methods for dispute settlements. Yeah, but then uh, in 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 practice, the uh, most of the time the the the, the investor they will just do the administrative the just do the um, administrative uh, uh, complaints. Yeah, lawsuits. And then, if it fails, they will go to the international tribunal. So uh, and um, so um, that, that's why they. What, what, once the case go to international tribunal, they it, the, the the it's very hard to control the the the, the case. So uh, and you know in the past when the when they got the when there is a dispute, there are many there will be many agencies involved. Yeah, not just uh, the local government, but also need to uh, some of the the agencies from different uh, from different uh, area. Uh, must involve and they some and from for uh, many, in many cases they are very slow. They don't know what to do. Very passive. Yeah, they, they mean, and some, they don't have expertise. In on one hand, they don't they they afraid to give some uh, wrong opinion. On the other hand, or sometimes they are too aggressive. Also make problems. So so. Uh, uh, until the 19, uh, 2014, we don't have the federal specific mechanism for for managing the the, the disputes by the government agencies. So uh, so it and, and and the government realized that. And so in the 2014, the government have introduced uh, the decisions on the uh, that uh, frame the cooperation mechanism between the agencies. So that when every time when it happened, they will. Uh, they, 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 they will form the, the working group which uh, deal with the, the matters and the government assigned the um, ministry of justice as the lead agency yeah so uh, that helped but then it also didn't solve the problem because there are so many works so many issues and the, in, the investment uh, dispute is always very complex so uh, they uh, after some time they, uh, they, they the government realized that Minister of Justice is cannot perform that work well. So, in order to uh, to uh, uh, settle the dispute efficiently, we have uh, uh, the government introduce another uh, decisions which uh, decentralize the 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 function the the the, the respons responsibility for settling the disputes. Yeah. So now, if the, if the dispute uh, uh, if the, the the disputes arise in uh, uh, arise from any locality, then the, that local government have to take the uh, efforts to uh, settle it. Uh, and if they cannot settle, and they have to, they will then inform the Minister of Justice. Yeah. So, uh, or if they if this need to arise caused by the certain ministry, then that ministry must take, form the working group 
to uh, uh, to counter the, the 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 claim to prepare for the for the for the disputes so that mechanism actually uh, uh, help the 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 government agencies to counteract the the complaint uh, faster yeah and um, and and another thing that actually is quite uh, important is that they we, they need because the dispute for it, when the, the agency represent the government they need to have funding yeah? and then taking the, the budget from the government is not always a easy task so uh, and then that's why in the year 2018 the, the ministry of finance have introduced a special circular to provide the mechanism to access the budget yeah, for, for the agency to access the budget to and to form the to 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 get the budget from the government to uh, to uh, uh, to prepare the working group for the working group to to uh, prepare for the investor state dispute settlement uh, and um, it helped the agency to prepare the the cost for the cost to hire the lawyers uh, good lawyers good experts for to, to counter the the the, the, the disputes and um, yeah, and lastly, I think it's also important that the government now is uh, uh, preparing the all kind of guidelines, handbooks, trainings for the for the government agencies, so that they can understand better about the 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 invest investment disputes, and they they also this uh, mechanism also uh, help to uh, collect data to identify the source of the. That the, the source of government generated political risk, and so that they can uh, quickly, yeah, and define who will be uh, should be involved in the working group, and uh, what uh, fun what matter what uh, action they need to prepare to uh, uh, to uh, prepare the expert the experts. Yeah, so that actually um, I think the, some um, some of the um, move um, of, from of some of initiatives that give Vietnamese government. Uh, developed to uh, to uh, 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 address the the challenge, and um, yet I think that the, this is my last uh, some of my uh, uh, last comments that they, they, I I hope that they, they, the um, the system will be further developed uh, the, on the management of disputes by uh, uh, they, they, by uh, first it need to. Um, the, the Vietnamese uh, government have to uh, improve the strengthen the, the investment protection regime to to streamline the foreign investment policy. So uh, uh, it um, and uh, second, it must work on improving the coordination between the state agencies, both interministerial coordination, national, provincial, or government coordinations. Uh, it if uh, if it can be uh, done uh, efficiently, then they. The dispute can be minimized. The, the, and the, the last uh, solution that I think very important is the to uh, is to develop efficient dispute prevention mechanism. In my view, the preventing the ISDS is more important. And uh, it, it can uh, it, the most of the actually investor do, didn't want doesn't want didn't, do not want to to uh, uh, have the dispute or uh, with the government. And because they want to do uh, in business in Vietnam, so uh, sometimes when there is a the issue, they it can be handled, settled uh, very fast. Yeah, more if, uh, when it just start. Yeah, so uh, uh, so that it it, it needs uh, to have some kind of prevention mechanism. Uh, and uh, I think that uh, Vietnam can learn from the ex experience of uh, Korea. The South Korea, they have a very effective uh, office of uh, uh, yeah, for investment ambushment uh, uh, office, and this office they help they, be, they act as a, you know intermediary between the investors and the government. Although it's it's a part of the government uh, uh, government agency, but it is it act always to protect the interest of investors. So when there is an in invest in whatever uh, dispute happen or any problem, the the investor always can come to that uh, uh, ombudsman office to uh, you know to explain, and then they get can get the, the support from the, that that uh, agency, and uh, uh, it will uh, you know talk to the authority and find the solutions. 
So some of the provinces in Vietnam, they have already established such kind of uh, ombudsman office, but uh, you know, many are still not aware of this. And I think uh, uh, they, they go and have to pay more attention and support the government to uh, develop this kind of office so that, uh, you know, to avoid uh, uh, the, the, the race of uh, conflicts. Yeah, so uh, this is uh, all of my uh, uh, presentations. And uh, I hope that I could give uh, you uh, some uh, overview of the, you know, the, the, the pictures of Vietnam in investment treaty networks and also the experience of Vietnam in improving the implementation uh, of the international obligations as well as the management of the investors st state disputes uh, in the current, current, uh, at the current time. So uh, yeah, thank you very much. And uh, I'm very uh, uh, happy to uh, maybe discuss or answer the questions uh, from you. Thank you. Thank you very much. It was indeed a very interesting and a very complete and detailed uh, lecture that you've made. And we learned a lot from the system of uh, Vietnam. But uh, I would like to do a question that uh, uh, it was not uh, completely uh, answered, uh, even if I could understand uh, some difference between the law and the practice that you pointed out <coughs> and the problems of coordination with uh, in the government and with the courts. Uh, I would like also to know something more about the political issue. Uh, uh, you talked about the economical situation, the opening in 1987 and this kind of things. And my question was, if from the political point of view, from the uh, rule of law, from uh, uh, the elections, uh, how are the things in uh, Vietnam, uh, uh, just to complement the uh, the wonderful speech that you made uh, about uh, the economical issues. Uh, I don't know if you can answer to me. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, I sh if we have more time, I would, uh, you know, explain more, but I think that I would like to highlight some of the, why I still say that we have already have the mechanism for coordination, but still, I think this is a problem. Uh, uh, you know, because, uh, uh, because is uh, because the, as I mentioned, uh, the, the three ministries that are uh, involved in the, in the internalization is the Minister of Justice, Ministry of uh, uh, Planning Investment, and the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, they are experts in the international law. Uh, however, they you know the, the other ministries, they are not very much, uh, uh, you know, of experts, have, uh, have, much, have the expertise on the international, uh, in, on the law and on the uh, invest in, in, and on the Vietnamese commitment on, uh, on the, in regard to investment, uh, international investment law. So, uh, in uh, so when they they and they don't have ex uh, when they when there is a problem arise they um, many of uh, many many some some sometimes not not now but you know in some cases they they tend to be very passive and they they are uh, you know they don't they don't uh, provide the the opinion uh, on time or they uh, so they they tend to be very passive and because the the resource for this is also limited. In, in the ministries. So, uh, uh, you know, the coordination is very slow and this is actually a problem for Vietnam because uh, as I mentioned, uh, uh, the prevention of the dispute is very important. They, uh, when the ministry, when they actually see they cannot, cannot coordinate, they don't know what is the problem, where, whether they, the, the, the Vietnamese government is uh, in a strong positions or they are in the, in the, in the weak position. So at that time, there are two solutions. First is to negotiate with the investors, yeah, to you know to give up their measures, and the others is to you know to to keep with the positions. So because of the lack of coordinations, 
and uh, then the the decisions is uh, it sometimes very or very slow, and they you know they they, um, they and consequently they when the investor they lost I mean when when you know when when the impact the interest of investor is is uh, is high and they will you know not uh, anymore uh, wanted to or they don't want to negotiate or they want to want to find solution they just want to go to the court international arbitration to uh, to get the reward. And that is for two, and when we come already to international uh, arbitration, then it's too late already. So, and Vietnamese, actually, I tell you one thing is in Vietnamese, the government has a policy that they don't, they want to make uh, the international commu community, uh, uh, you know, feel that Vietnam is a safe place. So they always, when it comes to international arbitration case, they always try to negotiate with the, with the investors. Yeah. So, uh, and then they might they may lose their uh, you know the 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 money of course yeah to, to compensate the investor even if the investor or wrong or Vietnamese uh, and uh, so in because of this I think that the coordination between the ministry is very important the coordination between the ministry to understand the the, the issues to form the strategy and to prevent the uh, escalation of the dispute. Very important, yeah. So uh, that's that's uh, that's why I, I mentioned. Although we have the the framework for the coordination, but in fact, in practice, the coordination is still not there. I think that it needs to be improved. So that's why I I, I propose a solution that to to uh, further improve the the coordinations. And uh, I uh, for the rule of law, I mean, I think that they uh, you as I mentioned that they. Uh, I think the um, the emphasis of rule of law of Vietnam is the, that the the government now must to uh, must comply with the law, uh, and uh, this is actually a substantial change compared to the before the 1980s, where at the time the every everything the everything uh, is under the common economy and economic system, when the party say yes, everyone agree. Yeah, so there is no no there is no law. Actually, we only start developing law, you know, during 1990s. We added before we maybe only have some few laws on the criminal law, administrative law. We don't have economic law at all. So now, after the adoption of the Moi policy, we recognize that rule of law is important. The government need to uh, uh, you know, by, make decision based on the law, based on the legal procedures, and must be uh, uh, liable for any wrong actions. Yeah, so of course it uh, is. Uh, the, I think the, the the system is still not there. I mean, it's not comparable to uh, European Union and some other con developed country, but uh, it's developing, and the and the the rule of law is considered as a key element for Vietnam to uh, develop the the legal system, the economy, and uh, and the, actually is also pressured by the international integrations. Yeah, under the many treaties, we, you know, just one of information when we joined the WTO in the 2007, we adopt, we have to amend, introduce new laws, many laws, about few hundred laws and regulation was uh, adopted during the negotiations. So, uh, and then from there, we have to Im implement the law in accordance with our commitments. And, but the political de uh, design of Vietnamese government is that we, Try to follow what we have, uh, what what we have uh, uh, committed, uh, undertook, undertook under international uh, treaties. So, as you mentioned, uh, uh, until now we face very few. Uh, I mean, not still we are facing increasing this, but it's compared to the other country. We say actually we face uh, not that many disputes and not, not many complaints at WTO level, and also at the regional level so and we that's why we can we become partners of the european union we are come, become partner of the uh, united states and uh, other countries so that is uh, i mean the political will of the government uh, and uh, the and also the on on the implementation of rural law and uh, i think that we uh, they need to be further I mean to strengthen but uh, we move for, moving forward uh, toward that direction Thank you very much. It was indeed very helpful and uh, made us understand better the situation that uh, we are living, you are living in Vietnam.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there any other question? Professor well, if, Vietnam? If I may, dear Professor. Yeah, of course. Thank you very much, dear Professor, also from my side for uh, the very interesting presentation. And uh, we most certainly learned a whole lot about the current situation uh, regarding Vietnam and uh, international um, investments. Well, one question that occurred uh, to me during the presentation, you've answered already, because, of course, um, international um, investments are very much open to arbitrational cases. And um, a question that had occurred to me was um, uh, if there were any major cases in, in uh, front of uh, for example, your Supreme Court that have occurred over the years. But you answered already that uh, judges are tending to be quite conservative uh, yeah. in that point of view. Um, so uh, it would be, I guess, more uh, like, like a remark since, since you mentioned that um, the Korean example of the foreign investment ombudsman could be helpful uh, for, for addressing certain issues um, indeed, uh, the European uh, experience to that matter would also be that uh, we also have uh, the European Ombudsman, um, who is quite active. And it is actually a pity that not many Europeans know that uh, he or in the present case she, because uh, it's a woman, uh, exists. But um, in, in, in my point of view, it is, uh, you're perfectly right that such structures can perfectly help uh, in the meantime and, and fill certain gaps in order to, to address uh, certain issues and problems at an earlier stage. So in any case, once more, uh, a heartfelt thank you for your uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, comments. <laughs> Great. Does anybody else has uh, any questions? If not, let me just Thank you once more, your wonderful lecture, your participation in the office group is great. It is great that you are here. Uh, 